This is Ruger. This is the walking horse that came in that was really nervous. And I had to do some work with him to get him to stand. And what I'm wanting to do is to get him to stand and be relaxed. He's wanting to charge right off as soon as you get in the saddle. So I want him to stand and be relaxed. I'm going to adjust his feet right here a little bit. There we go. For me to get on, relax for me to get on, and walk off relaxed. He's walking off right immediately. Let's do this again. Good boy. Good boy. I helped him right there a little bit. Made a little contact with the bit. Let him know I wanted him to stand. Good boy. I want to encourage this standing. So I'm, I'll get on him in a minute and ride him and show you what else we're working on. He also needs work on his backup and he also needs work on some neck rein. So he'll ride a little bit better one handed. Come on. But I want to spend a lot of time encouraging him to be more relaxed when I get on. Last video, I talked about the psychology of why a horse gets nervous when you get on and why you need to take your time and let them understand what's going on. If you can back a step. <coughs> Good boy. Back another step. Just hold this pressure. See if, there we go. See if it just back off of it. Good boy. The backup is one of the things that I've been working on from the saddle. And asking him to back up from this position kind of helps to shift their mind from forward into neutral to stand. So I'll just kind of stand here a minute. Let him take it all in. I'm going to step down and lead him off. There we go. I need him to stand, but I also need him to walk off easy when I'm in the saddle. So even though walking off here shifts his brain back into forward again, it's helping to prepare him for when I do walk off in the saddle that he walks off easy. He's not being maliciously bad in any of these things that he's doing. This is going to be a very nice horse. He's just reacting to what he was taught to do before. He walked off. I'm going to circle him back around. Get his feet stopped and step back down. Oh, got to be still for me to get off. Walk around, we'll do it again. This is the kind of thing that takes lots of repetition to fix. There's really not much that can be done to make it happen quicker other than be consistent with the repetition. He's just trying to, back up that time, I'll take that. He's just trying to do what he was taught to do. Come up in position. Good boy. not going to swing my leg over as long as he's walking forward. I keep my upper body over the saddle so that I can distribute some weight 
to the opposite side so that it's not all on that left stirrup. Wait for him to get still and then I'll swing my leg over. So now that I'm on, he walked off. He didn't charge off like he was. I'm gonna go ahead and work on his backup just a little bit. If I get his backup gone in his brain, get him thinking back up, that should transfer to standing a little bit better for me to get on. Right there, he's kind of, I felt him leaning forward. He took that one step. Let's back up a step. I'm gonna make my contact, I'm gonna hold it, give a little squeeze with my calves and he takes a step back, I release. I'll do this again where you can see a little bit better angle of the direction that I'm pulling. That's really important. So it's really important that I'm not pulling down here I'm actually pulling up here. That helps to take the weight off of his front feet. Makes it easier for him to do what I'm asking him to do. Good boy. His back feet are, are very long. My farrier is supposed to be here this coming week to get his feet done. He's gonna be a lot more comfortable when that's done. Bring his shoulders over to the left and back up again. One more step. There you go, good boy. And I'll step down. Good boy. Now we'll get back up again. Let's see if he stands better. I really want him to stand, relax, and then walk off slow. Good boy. Good boy. He's paying attention over there, but I know he's paying attention to me too. It'd be different if he was a lot greener, more unbroke horse. I'd worry more about his eyes being, or his ears being locked over there. This is a pretty broke horse. Let's get a step back. There we go, good boy. Now I'm gonna walk forward, and I'm gonna walk forward to the right. I need to get his shoulders a little bit softer, a little bit looser. So I don't want to walk straight off. That's going to get his shoulders stiff. It's going to get him really pushing in the back end, which he pushes pretty good. Let's walk off that way. There. See how he stepped off to the right with his front foot? That's what I'm after. I need him to get it softer with them front feet. There, he walked off pretty nice that time. Didn't charge off like he did in the beginning. Walk a circle to the left. And stop. Good boy. Good boy, let's do it again. Lots and lots of repetition doing this over and over. I'm not sure how much in the video you can see that he's more relaxed than the last video, 
but sitting on him, I can feel it in his muscles. His muscles are a lot softer than they were in the beginning. Get him to square up a little better. There we go. Set him up for success there so that he can better support me when I step up there. Good boy. Good boy. All right, so last time we stepped off to the right, this time let's go step off to the left. Good boy. So we'll walk a little bit now. He stepped off forward, he stepped off relaxed, he didn't charge off like he was in the beginning. I need to work on a little bit of neck rein, just so when you steer over here, he'll actually steer. It's a balance here. I need forward to work his neck rein, but if I get too much forward going, he's gonna start rushing off when I get in the saddle again. Push over, there we go. Now let's steer to the right. See, I can feel him as we walk thinking forward more, and in the process of thinking forward, he's getting more deliberate with his steps forward. So we have to mix in the reining. All I'm doing is kind of pointing his nose, putting a little pressure with my outside rein, and then follow through a little bit with my outside leg. Steer to the right, there we go. Steer to the left. If he gets too much forward going, his feet are stepping out, they're not gonna step over when I ask him to neck rein steer. See how we're getting forward, he's getting kind of pulling me to the barn a little bit. That's that balance. I'm gonna ask him to stop right over here. Whoa. Good boy. Ask him to stop, I'm gonna step down. Walk him around the mounting block, come on. And we'll do it again. Uh, you probably couldn't hear that big exhale when I stepped down. That's really important for his brain. So now that I steered him around and we went forward a little bit, he's gonna have a little bit more forward on his mind. Might not stand as good for me to get on, we'll see. It's a balance. I can't do all of one and none of the other. I have to do some of both. Good boy. Good boy. So if we can back now. Good boy. One more step. When I back, like I said, I'm lifting my, pulling my hands up a little bit. I'm also squeezing just a little bit with my calves. If you hold your arms up over your head and somebody tickles you in the belly, you're going to pull your arms down. It's similar with the horse. I'm not really squeezing hard, I'm just touching. And that touching helps him to lift his back and step his front foot back, just like me pulling my arm down if it was over my head. Now let's step off to the right, point his nose. Neck rein, left leg, there we go, good boy. Let's go to the right again, point his nose, neck rein, left leg. I have my spur on, but I'm mainly just pushing with my calves. I'll push with my spur if I need to go to tell. Everything is ask, tell, demand. If I need to demand, then I'll push with my spur. See, he's pushing forward, that's where I'm going to push with my spur. A little bit of over. I'll steer back the other way. He's picking up his pace a little bit. Let's walk a couple of circles. That should help slow down his pace. There we go. It did.
There, see how that's circle slow it is paced down. Now we'll rain again. Want to go to the barn, point his nose. A little bit of a demand because he's not respecting the calf. I like that when I push with my spur, after he sped up, he slowed back down to the slower pace without me pulling on him to slow him down. We're looking at the barn again. There we go. He's pushing forward into the bit a little bit. When I ask him to rein over, that's normal. He needs to realize that the release for the pull is this way or that way if we're steering that way. That's where the release is. There we go. There should be equal contact on both reins. The only difference is one rein is a little shorter than the other and that maintains the bend. Right there, he's pulling on my left hand pretty hard. Push him over with my right leg. Still pulling on my right hand. Let's circle him, I mean left hand. Let's circle him left. There we go. There we go. Ah, he's softening my hand, I'll release. I do what is considered somewhat of a half halt, but I do it either one side or the other side. With, especially with younger horses, but even older horses, I rarely do a half of what is considered a typical half halt. Whoa. I rarely make contact with both reins and squeeze with my hands at the same, or my legs at the same time to, to rebalance the horse with using both sides. That's a typical half halt. I rarely do that, but what I, I use what I call a one sided half halt. Either I use my left rein, left leg aid, or I use my right rein, right leg aid in what I call a one-sided half halt. So if I am riding the horse around, let's say, let's get around where I'm going in a straight line. I'm riding the horse, and he is either leaning to one side, or he's pulling on my hand, what I will do, let's say he's pulling on my right hand, I'll do a right side half halt and then get soft again. Softens the face, softens the shoulder. Back around. That little stumble in the back is from his back feet being so long. We'll get that taken care of soon. I'll come around. I use that what I call one-sided half halt a lot, especially with younger horses. Most younger horses can't handle both reins and both legs at the same time, but the half halt is a real valuable aid to rebalance the horse, get the back end up underneath them, lift the shoulder, soften the face to your hand. So I'll do a one-sided half halt a lot. I'll throw something else in there on you. So I was showing you a one-sided half halt going straight. Well, let's change that up and let's start a right bend, a right circle. And I got him bent to the right. My inside rein has him bent to the, bent to the right. My outside rein, typically in English world, that's called a supporting rein. I still call it a supporting rein because it supports that shoulder right there. That rein tells that shoulder what to do. I use it the exact same way. So as I'm going on this right circle, if I take and do a one-sided half halt on the left side, get around where you'll be in a better angle. Circle around to the right. And do a half halt on the right. See the shoulder kind of come over. 
basically what I'm doing teaching the neck rein. I'm asking him to round his left side. Now he's pushing through. Now let's go the other way. Asking him to round that side of the body, lift that outside leg up. That's the first step and asking for a spin. It's the exact same maneuver. Point his head to the left. Now right then, when I pointed his head to the left, I had to do a half halt on the left side because he was leaning on my hand. There we go. I did right there, right there. Now he's pulling, we're gonna go to the left. Now I half halt with the right side. There we go. So the nice little lift the shoulder and step over. Basically the same thing. So now I've been walking around a good bit. Let's ask him to stop. Whoa. I'm gonna stand here just a minute. Step down. And take him for a walk in a circle. All right, right. All right, so I walked him a couple of circles. Let's get back on and see what we got. Caught me off balance there. I was swinging my leg over. I'd already committed when he walked off. Let's back up and do that again. I really thought he was gonna stand. I right away to just another half a second. Let him mess up. There we go. Now he remembered. Now all that walking that I did forward got his mind thinking forward again. Again, it's not a matter of him trying to be bad. He's just doing what is on his mind. Just doing what he was taught to do. We just have to redo that training a little bit. There we go. Now we got. Now we got stand still on his mind, and he's wanting to stand still. Reinforce that a little bit. So this is Ruger. I'll put a link up here to another video that I did of him. Until next time, thank you for watching.